Hey everybody, looks like we are live. How are you today? Thank you for coming out and hanging out with me on another Wednesday. It's very exciting. We are up to part five of painting the emotional portrait in airbrush and India ink on tinted paper. We're really getting far with this one. And so I just want to thank everybody for coming. Let's see who we have here. Mr. Roy, all the way from New Jersey. How are you, sir? And we have Colette from Wisconsin. Great to see you as well. How's everything? I hope you guys are having a great week. Michael McClung, how are you today? Great to see you. And uh, Michael, where are you from again? It's going to take me a couple of times to remember, but I'm going to keep asking until it becomes part of Part of my knowledge that I know where you're from so I'm glad you're here again sir thank you so much for coming out so that is great so right now I do have the light mixture in my extreme Patriot arrow and but I always like to start the day when I'm working fresh in a painting even though I airbrush earlier is I always like to come in with the detail mixture half and half half water half detail mixture just to get warmed up. So what I'm gonna do now, oh, Maryland, okay, great, so cool. Now I remember, so Michael McClung, Maryland. So the three M's, right? <coughs> I should remember that now. Thank you for being patient with me, I appreciate that. And so, as you can see, she's coming along slowly but surely, but you know what? There's no points for time. No points for time. No one cared how long the Mona Lisa took. No one cares how long Girl with a Pearl Earring took. No one cares how long the Sistine Chapel took. They just care about its beauty and its workmanship and its importance in art. So anyone who is uh, thinking about there's points for speed, well, there aren't. So I'm just going to go ahead and secure my border because what I'm doing is keeping everything clean, keeping the edges clean and uh, maintaining the beautiful white and everything like that, getting darker and darker till we get to the beautiful blacks. It's going to be really, really great. So very exciting stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and get my other airbrush. Hold on one second, sir, okay? I mean, hold on, guys. I'll be right there. I have an emergency. Sorry about that, guys. 
a uh, little bit of sad news and uh, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna go and uh, I'm gonna get the other airbrush let's see where is the other airbrush here it is and I'm just gonna put the backing on here Okay, so and I'm just going to put in the detail mixture. One moment, guys. Okay, I'm back. So sorry about that. And let's see. Okay, so now we have to put in the detail mixture, which I just have to locate. Let's see. So I'm going to put five drops of the detail mixture and then five drops of water. Okay. All right, so I'm going to get my glasses and then we'll start. Thank you so much for your patience. So sorry for that delay today. Okay, so I have my detail mixture. Let me get the reference over here. There she is. Okay, great. And I do use... Uh, uh, Patty, how are you? I do use... Uh, uh, Distilled water, so thank you for that. Definitely important. Not for the short term, for the long term, you know. Brad, how are you? Thank you so much. How's everything? Good to see you, sir, and good to see you, Patty. So I'm so glad you guys are here. And let's see. So now I have my, my detail mixture. Let me go ahead and pull up my reference from Pure Ref. Uh, where is she? January live. Is this her? Yes, it is. I do have the reference, so that's good. And so, hey, Wendy, how are you? Great to see you. How's everything? I'm so glad you're here. 
So now what we're going to do is, where we work in last week, I think we were working on her hair. So we're just going to continue working on her hair a little bit. Nothing, nothing too, too crazy in the beginning, you know. So Brad is also from Maryland. So we got two Maryland people here, Michael and Brad. So cool. And we have Color Graphics, Roy, who's originally from Maryland. So definitely a Maryland connection going on here. So I have this very light, diluted detail mixture. So I'm not making any big changes. Just getting acclimated with the painting. Wendy, thank you. Wendy says she looks fantastic. I appreciate that so much. So I'm kind of working on the secondary shapes. I've gotten the big shapes. Now I'm getting the secondary shapes. So we're working on that now. And I have my pencil lines and they're my little training wheels as you as you know and just gonna make sure everything is working correctly we're in good shape Let's see. Hey, John Diekman, how are you, sir? All the way from Wisconsin, and Wendy, all the way from from the Dallas, Texas area. So thank you guys for coming by. I so appreciate it. So it's really crucial to take your time and to slowly slowly work things up, you know. Uh, Oz, how are you? Great to see you. How's everything? So, Oz, where are you from, sir? Now, there was somebody named Oz last week, but it was a longer name. Are you the same person as last week? And as I'm working, I really like getting acclimated and just relaxing and just getting into the flow, right? Just taking my time. Oh, there's always a Maryland connection everywhere, as Will Smith, Mike says. Now, is Will Smith originally from, I believe he's from the Baltimore area. Is that true? Lower my air pressure here. Now, I do have the light mixture in the other airbrush right now. And like I said, just, just kind of relaxing, taking it easy moving around, just deepening the values ever so slowly. Oh, right, Roy. So your wife is from Baltimore. Okay, cool. Dwayne, how are you, sir? How's everything going all the way from Central California? So glad to see you. How's life over there, sir? Are you guys still getting that rough winter? I've been reading about it in the news. So now I'm switching over to this uh, light mixture, which is much darker uh, than the uh, diluted detail mixture. And now I could be a little more sure of my my marks 
Oh, Will's from Philly. Oh, cool. Wow, Dwayne says we're about to get four to six inches again starting tomorrow. That's snow, right? That's unbelievable. Wow. moving this down here so I'm going to pretty much be working on the hair for the first half hour to 45 minutes very cool Okay, so as you can see with this nice uh, light mixture, I'm able to really start to get some detail here. Now the trick is when doing hair, you have to make sure that you are not, um, how do you say, you have to definitely make sure that you are not making the hairs equidistant in the same size. Uh, hair is like a controlled chaos, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my, uh, this eraser here, which is non-aggressive, and I'm just going to very lightly erase this pencil line here so now is the time where you start getting rid of some of those pencil lines which is really good and you know we don't need those training wheels as much as we get to this stage and so we'll see things get a lot more clear we start getting more towards our darkest values and then we're able to come in and hit our lightest values but not until the darkest values are slowly, slowly in place. Michael said he just got his Visioneer board in this week. Cannot wait to put it together and work on it. Oh, great. Congratulations. That is fantastic. I know that's going to really uh, organize your, your studio. So congrats on that, definitely. And I'm just darkening the zygomatic uh, bone and the space between the zygomatic bone and the mandible. And we're just darkening this up a bit. And as you can see, that's really going to help to 
give us that beautiful expression that she has of wonder, I think. And I'll be right back, guys. Just got to use little boy's room. Be right back.
Thank you guys. Sorry about the delay. Let's see. So, okay. So we are working on her hair. Sorry, things a little up in the air today, but we're going to continue to live stream. Oh, here's a good time for the Blackbeard wheat, which is always good. And you see with the Blackbeard wheat, it enables us to, to paint and get some of that kind of erratic hair texture. Mr. Todd, how are you all the way from San Diego? Let's see. Okay. And we're just going to continue with some of this hair texture here. And it's really beautiful, the hair texture you get with this Blackbeard weed. And you just got to be careful that you don't uh, keep that texture and have it go over the hand. That would be terrible on the face. So you have to be very careful. And you spray through the little openings of, this, uh, of these little fibers here. And you see, you get this beautiful hair texture. I might have overdid it right there, but we can always adjust. There we go. Hey, Nick, how are you? Great to see you. So glad you're here. That is great. And again, we're going to use our freehand shield. And we're going to actually pull this part of her hair forward, meaning that the hair behind has to be pulled back a little bit. So I'm going to do perpendicular and not parallel. And I'm doing the, the light mixture, so that which is a much darker than a diluted detail mixture. And that's going to help us. Help us create depth. Let's see here, just continue. And we're just going to bring this dark down. So you see I'm moving around now, and now I could move around to her sweater or turtleneck, turtleneck sweater. And with this light mixture, I'm able to really gain some some clarity now things are starting to really ramp up as far as as the detail and everything Okay, so we see we have some nice darks right over here. So I'm just coming back in here and deepening these values. And I deepen these values, other values actually get lighter and then we have to deepen them as well. So I like moving around when I'm doing this. And I have the air pressure pretty low at 25 PSI. And then I have the included pack valve and I lower that even more. And then the amount of, of uh, spidering is greatly diminished as well as overspray. You still have to be careful of it.
So while you guys are here, one uh, guys and girls are here, I want to give you a sneak peek of what I've been working on. Almost done. It is uh, one of the few male nudes, uh, female nudes that I that I do. I really enjoy them. So this is my latest female nude, and let me know what you think. One of the things I wanted to play with was having a photo that, you know, certain areas were were blurry because of the lens that uh, was used at the time. So like her toes, you can see, you can, they're very out of focus. Let me see if I can zoom in for you. See how they're very out of focus and that's the way they were with the reference. Yet in her face, it's much more in focus. Let me see if I can focus this camera a little better. There we go. Thank you, Wendy. I appreciate that. So when we're doing a portrait, it's a lot different. We're really focused in and uh, we're still worrying about lights and values and everything. But pretty much when you're doing a portrait in a studio session, like this uh, photographer that everything is pretty much uh, in focus. It's on the same picture flame, frame. Everything is, is, has the same amount of attention. But when you are doing something like this, maybe you're using a camera with a, uh, you know, very low aperture, very fast lens, like f2.8 or 1.8 or something like that. You have to decide whether you want to focus on her foot, which is right close to you, or her face, which is further back. So this photographer basically focused on uh, her face. And what's interesting is that it looks like the hands are on the same picture plane or same distance as, as her face because they are in focus in the same way that her face is. So that's what I basically was looking to do when I seen this photo. Ah, oh, thank you, Nick. I appreciate that. So, so one of the things um, when, let's say you're, you're going through the internet, you're on Pexels, you're on Pixabay, and you find a picture that really interests you, but the photo is not the perfect photo. I think you sh still should do it. If it if it's a pose that really strikes you, it's an image that strikes you, find a way to paint it, right? I think that's very important. You don't want to say, well, you know, it's not perfect like like this reference. It's pretty perfect photograph. Everything's there for me. But here I really had to work hard. But the main thing for me was is that I wanted to... I wanted to grab whatever it is that struck me when I first seen this pose. And I love it because she's a, a strong woman, yet, you know, it's a nude, yet she's very strong. And uh, she's definitely, you know, looking at the viewer and she's present. And, and also it's an elegant nude. So I love that sort of, uh, you know, contrast, which is really beautiful. Uh, Michael says, I think I'm still intimidated by doing a portrait. I have to watch a Tim, Tim a lot more often. Oh, definitely. Definitely watch my live streams and the videos I do. And Michael, if you have any questions, always feel free to give me an instant message or an email. Thank you, Wendy. Wendy says, very elegant. I just wanted to share that with you, how we could definitely have a photo that's not stereotypically perfect. But if something struck you, is to go ahead and paint it anyway. It's a much more of a challenge to paint a photo that isn't a perfect photo than one that is always perfect, always like high resolution, everything's on the same. Mr. Dennis, how are you, sir? Sorry I missed your message. How are you? And Patty, I'm so sorry I missed you there. Have a great night. Uh, it's been an interesting night so far. I'm so sorry. A little bit out of it, but let's see. I'm going to go get my, my uh, ginger ale. And then at 10.15, I'm going to make a, make a green tea with lime, I think.
Okay, so back to our light mixture and just continue darkening things up here. Okay, here's a good opportunity. Right here, it's pretty dark. And then it comes right down. So I'm going to use my freehand shield. One second rule. Perpendicular and not parallel. There we go. And then right in here we have There we go. And just continue to build up some of this hair texture. And remember, hair is always cumulative. It's not something that you're going to get right away. It's and here's a good time to uh, get my paintbrush and let's see we'll start working on some of the hair with the paintbrush right now now where is it that's the question is it over here yes no or did i put it over here never clean your studio you won't find anything again let's see i did have it here a lot of paint brushes but they're mostly oil paint brushes but I do did find my Cotman rigger brush number one and I do have my spare piece of paper because we do our dry brush technique and I'm gonna put some some straight detail mixture in here we'll see how that works we may have to go with the medium mixture, but we'll see. Ah, thank you, Michael. Michael says he loves it. I appreciate that. And thank you, Wendy. Okay, so now is a good opportunity to kind of hit some of these dark hair patterns. And like I said, never be in any rush. No one cares how long it takes. Trust me. It's true, sometimes we get excited about a painting. We want it to be over. We wanna, want to go ahead and work on the next piece and everything like that. But we really have to we really have to pause from that kind of thinking and realize that once it's over, it's over forever. So an extra week or an extra two weeks is really nothing, right? So that's something that you always remember. When you sign it, it's over. You, you're not going to work on it again. So take your time. And now is a good to emphasize the her jaw as it's coming down against the sweater, or in this case, which is her turtleneck. Nick says, "I wish it was always that easy to." Do not have a deadline. Well, definitely, Nick. That's a little different. Uh, yeah, if you have a deadline, I understand. But, you know, definitely understand that. There 
and just bring this down and you can see just coming in with this paintbrush here and Dwayne says he likes to work on a couple of pieces at a time if he feels rushing one definitely good to switch to another that's a really great philosophy and a wonderful practice And never do with the airbrush what you can do better with a different tool. Keep that in mind. And so you see as we come down and really uh, hit all of these uh, really dark linear areas, it's really helping us greatly. And... There's some linear areas here that I could hit. And like I said, you're not going to do hair in one sitting. That's never going to happen. And just make sure we're doing the one second rule to keep our head in the game, you know? That's important. And then here, even the, the darks on her nostrils, it's just slightly darker on the inside part. And we can just hit that nice hard edge there. Really give some, really nicely give some volume and some three dimension to her nostrils as the light is not getting inside her nostrils. And then we can delineate some of the darkest darks right by her lips here, upper lip. Comes right here. We can shape her incisor just like so. Good time to go ahead and and get the shapes really nice and I like moving around when I have this you know this paintbrush here and not that this is going to be the the last time I use it but I just want to be as efficient now that I have it out and here's a good time to actually work on her pupils can really accentuate the catch light in her eye here. And I think we're going to be coming in with the white pastel soon. Maybe not tonight, but definitely next week. And Mike says, it's hard to take your time with one at a time. If you do not have two, you can really uh, take in your time. And patience is one thing that he doesn't have. Patience is key, right? And that's not always easy to have. Okay, guys, I'm going to go make my tea. Please uh, hang out, talk amongst yourselves. And really, really an honor that you're here with me. Be right back.
Okay, the water is uh, on. I have one of those really cool electric kettles. And so we are continuing with our brushwork. And I was working here. Now what I can do is I can take that and get rid of a lot of the moisture, right? And we can zoom in on her eye here. And perhaps we could work on some of the details, the striations in her eye. And let's just see how it goes. Got to be really light touch. Dwayne says he'll have his main pieces going, usually a commission and a few other small things lined up. This way he can take a break and being a few smaller ones out, usually less complicated. That's very cool. Yes. We all have our processes, right, Dwayne? That, that gets us through, you know, all of the deadlines and, you know, shipping things out and all the stuff that entails with you know being an artist or an entrepreneur right that's important and as you can see how i'm coming in and get some of those uh details in her eye and yeah it's a minor detail but you know what it looks really beautiful when it's done right Exactly, Dwayne. It's what works for you, right? And, uh, you know, what works for, for me might not work for you. What works for, for you might not work with Nick. So it's all about finding your rhythm. And as you can see, now that I have this detail mixture, I could even reinforce some of the work that I did with the airbrush. And then I could just ever so lightly paint the border, but try not to make it a line, just sort of broken up. But let's pay attention to our reference as we're doing this. And now it's looking a little better. There we go. So now we could, whoop, maybe over here, I can darken this up here. There we go. So let's move on over. To this eye because what we do in one eye we always have to do on the other eye you know okay so we're gonna start with darkening this pupil here and then we're just gonna work on some of these little details in her eye here doesn't have to be perfect and then we're going to come back in with our pull this up oh, that means my tea is ready or the boiling water is ready. 
see a little bit of mistake, but that's easily erased. But just don't get emotional about a mistake. Just know that you'll get to it. Okay, we're going to let that dry over here. We have some beautiful individual hairs here on her eyebrow here. Let's make that happen. Remember, you want them to be uh, asymmetrical, not the same size or the same distance. It has to be that controlled organic chaos. Beautiful hard edge right here. Just want to get that. And then while we're here, what the paintbrush did, we can, what the airbrush did, we could reinforce. Okay, so let's see what we have. Come over here. Okay, so you can see those eyes are really popping now, which is great. And all right, so uh, that in, I'm feeling pretty good about that thus far. Okay, so I remember we had that little bit of an error there. That is erased very easily. No problem whatsoever. Just don't get emotional while doing it and get rid of some of our pencil lines here. Stay away from where we just worked with the eraser, I mean with the uh, paintbrush. And now I'm gonna come here and I'm just going to hit some of these lights in her eye here, just to create the beautiful designs of her eyes. I think that would look beautiful. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this over. And I think we're doing pretty well though so far, you know. Maybe I can come back in with the uh, detail mixture and darken this here just a little bit. There we go, like that. And soften that edge. And maybe we can darken her tongue a little bit. And we're going to come in and get some detail in her tongue. Michael says, time for him to get some sleep. 
Uh, all right, thanks so much for hanging out, and please, uh, please go ahead and uh, in instant message me or email me at paintingglyphs at gmail dot com. Okay, Michael, be my pleasure to answer any questions if you have any technical wise. Always happy and willing to help. So now that I have this, this detail mixture, I'm able to get uh, a little more, a little more forceful with my shadows. And I increase my distance when I want to get a softer, more gradated uh, application of the ink. And it's a little darker right on the outside here. Not on the eyelid, just outside the eyelid. It's a little bit darker. Right here is the retro obicularis oculi fat area. And here it's on the inside, the shadow. So it's very interesting how the shadow alternates from being on the outside of the eyelid and then on the eyelid on opposite sides. Those are things that you always want to think about when we're painting stuff like this. What side is it on? Where is that shadow hitting? Where's the light side? Where's the shadow side, right? And this little transition tone from the zygomatic bone to the malar fat on the cheekbone. Sorry about the weird light. Uh, live stream earlier, but someone I know passed away, so you know I'm pretty sad about it. Um, now it wasn't family, but just a nice person. So you know, kind of shocked to get that only moment. Actually, during the live stream in the very beginning, I got that message. So it was, it was very shocking, very shocking and sad. I'm just going to hit this dark right here. And right now it seems like nothing is happening and things are going super slow. Yes, they are going slow, but the thing is, is that we have to, we have to take our time and uh, not rush things. If in your painting it's going slow, you go slow. If it's going quick, you go with it and you go quick, but you don't force it. It's never a good thing to force it. Even with deadlines, it's not good to force it. Ah, oh, thanks, Oz, you know. Uh, it is a terrible tragedy, you know, it's like tomorrow is never, never a guarantee, right? We have to just be so happy with 
what we're able to uh, have in this life. You know, every day is a gift, regardless of whether it's uh, a happy day or not. It's a gift. It doesn't have to be. That's why a lot of the BS is just that, just BS, you know. And, you know, we worry about things and some of the things that occupy and take our peace away really isn't worth it, you know, in the grand scheme of things. It's rough. But guys and girls, thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight. And, you know, I'm really enjoying my time with you all. And I just want to let you know that I don't take you guys spending time with me lightly or or anything like that it's a it's a real blessing and I just want you to know that's how I see it that's how I see you guys and I always want to thank God you know as I am right now for uh, the live stream and you know having the ability and the resources to do the live stream you know because I know someone out there uh, needs the inspiration, maybe you can't afford workshops or school, art school or you don't have time and you have jobs and everything. That's why I do the live streams. For those who, you know, don't have the ability, whether it be time or finances or, you know, unable to leave the house and travel, if I can give a little bit of inspiration every week, then, then I'm taking the gift that I got from God and, and sharing it, right? You shouldn't take a light and put it underneath the table. You put it outside, you know, not outside, but on top of the table or on a light stand so it lights up the whole room. So with our talent, we have to share it in any way we can and, uh, you know, and share it with those and, you know, let God decide you know the results like who's gonna see this I don't know maybe somebody was gonna throw away their airbrush and then they decided you know watching my live streams like hey I can do what Tim does you know he's doing these live streams he's not skipping one part so I could watch it from beginning to end and really know and learn how to use this thing and then that person's like you know what I'm going to stick it out and they become a very, very happy, productive airbrush artist. And that's what I hope that the live streams do. And if they do, then I, then I get some solace from that, you know. And uh, Air Todd says, if you're going really slow like him, you're just special like him. We're all special, Mr. Todd, including yourself. And Brad, how you doing all the way from Canada? Great to see you, sir. So glad you are here. Thank you for hanging out. And you're here now, and that's all that matters. So I'm glad you're here, sir. Very glad. And just... I always say, uh, those who are meant to be here are always here, right? So... And as you can see, just building this up, this here, wow, Mr. Dwayne, thank you so much for this super chat. I really appreciate that, sir. Thank you. That means the world to me. And, uh, and thank you for your support. And thank you for your time and hanging out. I really appreciate you. You're really timely and wonderful comments. And uh, I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you for continuing to encourage me and continue to help make this live stream possible every week. You are the best, sir. Thank you for that, Dwayne. And thank you for sharing your talent. That's important. And we're just going to pull this over. So you see how I'm moving around a lot now. Always moving around. 
bobbin and weaving, right? And we can see, so what I can actually see is, is that we can kind of shape the hair with the eraser now a little bit, a little bit better. It's uh, amazing how when you know, our, our mortality, when we think about mortality, it really just kind of kickstarts our brains back into reality and, you know, priorities and all that stuff, you know. And Mr. Todd says, don't forget to hit the smash button. And Dwayne says, thank you for being here every Wednesday. I really enjoy the time here. Um, that means the world to me, Dwayne. And Definitely enjoy your time and your friendship. So thank you, sir. And uh, that is that is great to hear. Yeah, so back in 2018, I decided to concentrate on live streams. And I'm still doing videos, and I'm going to start doing recorded videos more and more, like I did one today. And... Uh, but I like to concentrate on the live streams because I could really, uh, thank you, Dwayne. I could really, uh, you know, get to know everybody, you know, and really help to help to be part of a community. At least if we only just hang out on Wednesdays, that's that's great. Really breaks up the week nicely. And I remember when I first started, there was like no one in the live stream, sometimes one person, <laughs> sometimes I did a whole live stream with nobody there. That was funny. I was kind of like talking to myself, but you know, that's how I got good, you know, that's how I got better. And then, you know, people started coming along like Willie, 1956, and, and uh, Wendy is one of the originals way back when. Uh, Brad's been with me going on four years, so yeah, I mean, and then all the people who are here the last year, I mean, it's great, it changes, you know, some people, you know, stop joining, some people come back, it's, it's just really dynamic too, which I really love. And so we're at 1041, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make my tea real quick. If you guys have to go to the bathroom or make tea for yourself or get yourself uh, a little uh, brewski or whatever, I'll be right back.
Just letting the tea bag steep. Okay, so uh, got my tea ready. I left the tea bag in there because it doesn't seem to want to brew as quickly. Oh my God, look at you guys. <laughs> I went away. <laughs> it's like Christmas. Dennis, thank you so much, my friend. I really appreciate you, Dennis, all the way from the uh, Dallas area. It's such a pleasure. Thank you so much. Uh, Dennis trusted me and uh, purchased one of my Extreme Patriot Arrows, and I'm such an honor that you're using it. And Brad, Brad Mummery, thank you so much. All the way from Canada, my student going on th uh, three and a half years. Guys doing amazing things. We're working in pastel and, and airbrush and soon to be working in oils together. So thank you for that, Brad. Thank you so much, Dennis. I uh, just want to say heartfelt thank you for you guys to, uh, you know, keep this live stream going, you know. Um, one of the good things about the live streams is um, I think in 2012 I got a divorce. And before then, you know, there was never, you know, when you're happily married or at least I thought I was happily married maybe on my end I was but you don't really get too lonely and since divorce you know not many people are knocking down my door right just so happens and uh, that's very common but one of the things that have been a wonderful constant has been the live streams you know you all are friends of mine and I don't see this as anything less than that. And uh, I mean that. It's a heartfelt, you know, you guys are my guys and girls are my friends. And, um, you know, you're here every Christmas. <laughs> my birthday, your birthday, uh, everything like that. Uh, uh, so, you know, that's the whole thing, you know. That's... Um, so it's about people and, you know, my, my channel isn't really growing that much. Uh, it's right now it's 4,100 and I think it's like going on 4,200 pretty soon, which is pretty good. I, I'm happy with that, I have to say. And, um, but yeah, the live stream, it's about people. And I think one of the blessings is, is that the live streams aren't too crowded so I can really get to know those who are, you know, here and, you know, everyone. I see some other live streams where the person can't even get their comments seen because it's just going so fast. So I'm really happy in that respect. So in that respect, I'm happy for not being successful. <laughs> That's counterintuitive, right? I'm happy I'm, I'm, I'm a failure. No, I mean, I'm happy in that respect because there's only usually like 10 or 12 people in the live stream, right? And uh, you guys and girls can get to know me and I could get to know you. And that's fantastic. People could 
uh, ask questions, which is great. So right now I'm just going to very lightly get in these little, you know, these little lines in the palm, right? And for that, you got to be far away. And you got to make sure that you keep moving because these have to be super soft. So you have to be far away, lower your air pressure. And then you can get those really, really soft lines in her palm there. So you see how we're moving around. It's, there's no... There's no agenda, you know, as far as I have to get this hand done or anything like that. I'm just moving around. And that's what John Augusta Dominique Angra said, is that you have to paint the, you have to paint the ensemble. You have to first uh, paint it as a whole. And then as you develop everything as a whole together when it's done, Angra said that your work will have life as if it was painted all in one breath and that's and that's when you have an organism a person so that's why you see me moving around making sure the hands are developed like the other things yes definitely Dwayne always look at the bright side of things it's so important right we don't always see that in the beginning but in time we do and that's that's great when we arrive there and say, hey, you know, that wasn't so bad, you know, or the worst part of it's over. Now I can enjoy some of the good things about what happened sometimes. And you see, blonde hair is interesting. Uh, somebody was talking about blonde hair. I think it was Ken Cleveland was talking about how blonde hair is is interesting, challenging, and it sure is. It really is challenging, but everyone loves a challenge. I love a challenge. Okay, so I think I can take the tea bag finally out. This is uh, green tea and with lime and sugar. Let's see how this looks. I got these little tiny limes. Let's take a sip. Wow, that's perfect, guys. That is really good tea. Try green tea with lime. If you haven't already, it's really quite delicious. There we go. So what I want to do is I'm just going to make sure that I do perpendicular and not parallel. There we go. Same thing here. I, so you always want to cover what you don't want to paint, right? So I'm going to cover the hair because I don't want to paint the hair. So see how I cover that hair. And now I'm getting that beautiful hairline right there, which is, which is great, you know. And we can develop this retroabicularis oculi fat compartment right above the, right above the eyelid and below the eyebrow. And so that's coming out further than anything else, and that's facing the light most directly. So on the outside of the eye, in between the eye, upper eyelid and the eyebrow, you're going to see more light getting hit. It's an anatomical reason, right? It's, it's not something, yes, we want to, you know, observe that, but it's so much better if we could really, you know, understand what we're observing, look for it. It's going to be so much better. You're going to have so much comp more comprehension. And now we're going to kind of separate her her upper lip, her, a lower lip from the tongue. And just keep going until you find that edge, perpendicular and not parallel. And you see, wipe your freehand shield off in between sprays when you're using the freehand shield. This way you're not reproducing 
Mr. Patrick Clutch Pyro, how are you doing today, sir? Patrick is one of my students, very talented guy. So glad he's here. Thank you so much for hanging out, sir. Okay, so now it's time to work a little bit on this uh, lower lip here. So let's make this happen. Let's get ready to rumble, as they say. Lower lip, striation, or wrinkles. We're going to keep our pencil lines. Why? Because we need those training wheels, if not for a little bit more. And we do have that detail mixture, half detail mixture, uh, half water, so it's nice and thin. Now we know we're going to get rid of those pencil lines, but we have to, we have to chill. Now what we're doing now, we're going to be working on later, so because we can't erase on, on wet paper, so we have to let that dry. Put that in back of our head. We're going to come back and erase some of those negative shapes, which is good. We have the corner of her mouth right here, creating a cast shadow right down there we have we're going to go back in with our darker mixture the side of her tongue right here that's getting shadow same thing right over here is getting shadow and over here and not as much light is getting to it Some little wrinkles in her tongue or whatever. Pupilli. I'm not sure. We got some pencil lines to get rid of. Eventually. Again here. We have the corner of the mouth. Which in turn is casting a shadow. On the lower lip. The top of the lower lip. Bringing this up. Oh, thank you. Patrick says she's looking amazing. Much appreciated, sir. Nice and slow. That's my motto. Slow and steady wins the race, they say. And the same thing, everybody, with your development as artists, airbrush artists, whatever medium you work in. Uh, just, you know, we can do much more in a year than we ever could in, you know, in a week or a day. So just be consistent. You don't have to do it 12 hours a day. If you just did, let's say, four hours a week and you did that for 52 weeks, guarantee you're really going to be surprised how good you are at the end of that 52 week period, you know? So that's very, very important and key. And I, I do like moving around a lot, as you can see, that's very important. I'm going to take another sip of my tea. Wow, that is so good. Okay, I think this is dry, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this and I'm going to put it through the pencil sharpener. What I want to do is I want to cut this at a 45 degree angle to create a nice wedge. 
see that? I have a nice beautiful wedge. And now I'm going to start setting up, sort of plowing the field for the white mixture or the white pastel, I should say. Let's see if we can blow this up for you. Oh, that's great. Yes, Mr. Patton, exactly. Portrait that uh, Mr. Uh, Patrick and I worked on. Amazing job he did. So you see I'm plowing the field. I'm getting rid of our training wheels. And now's as good a time as any to go ahead and try and come in with the white pastel. So I take the pastel pencil here and just uh, let me pull back out here. It took for, it took a long time, but you did it and you did it amazing, amazing results. Dwayne says every morning before starting the day, he still spends around 20 minutes just doing control exercises with the airbrush. And, I, and that's why you have such amazing control and your paintings are so clean, you know, Dwayne? That is so true. Be right back, sir. Okay, I'm back. So, Dwayne, definitely. See, that goes to show you no matter, I mean, Dwayne's been doing this a very long time, and he's like a great airbrush artist, and he still worries about doing control exercises. Just like the best pitchers in the world, they still, they still do their warm-ups, they have their pitching coach, they still do their practice sessions. We're never too good to polish up, you know, and get back to fundamentals. And uh, Clutch Pyro says he wish he had spare 20 minutes. Summer is coming, no, and he'll have time. Yes, things will definitely loosen up time-wise for the summer, right? Which is really good news to hear. That's when uh, Mr. Patrick started with me. That will be one year studying with me this summer. So, yes, and uh, real pleasure working with Patrick, as all my students. There we go. And so it's interesting. So once again, so I take the sandpaper and I take a pit pastel, white pastel, and then a paper stump. And now I just go ahead and I apply the white pastel and we can zoom in and do this together. And we want to get this texture. So how are we going to do that? It's not just where we uh, apply the pastel, but where we don't, which is just as important. And it's not going to be easy, but we start out with the large shapes first. And then little by little, we can get rid of these little pencil lines.
The important thing is, is to keep the one second rule, right? You make sure when you paint for one second, you look for one second. If you're going to paint for a couple of seconds, you look for a couple of seconds before you paint. And now you can see we can get rid of some of these uh, training wheels right here. This pencil line up there we can get rid of finally after week six. But you know what? I didn't do it prematurely. I made sure that I, I waited until I definitely did not need those lines anymore. Yes, time is such an important commodity in our lives, especially as we become adults, right? Now we can come back with our detail mixture and we can hit some of these little dark areas. And I can see there's little texture in her teeth there while I'm here. And you see I moved right over to her tongue. Just making sure that I get the big shapes down first, then we can go ahead and get these smaller shapes. Okay, now we can get rid of some of these pencil lines a little bit. It should be dry over here. And Rome is not built in a day, right? So we're taking our time to develop this. Once again, I have the detail mixture. And I'm using the Badger, uh, the Extreme Patriot Arrow, uh, Extreme Patriot 105 with the big cup. And it's really great. Same great detail, but you have a larger cup. And uh, it's, it's just as good as the customized Extreme Patriot Arrow that I sell on my website. And I will have them available next week. A new shipment of parts are coming in. So definitely let me know if you would like me to customize one of these airbrushes for you. I know you'll love it and it will become your favorite airbrush, if not one of them.
Okay, so now we can get rid of some of these pencil lines once again, and then come back in with the white pastel. Same thing on this side. We want to make sure, even though they look equidistant, we want to make sure we don't make them equidistant or the same size. Very crucial. Sometimes you can, you know, put the shape in and then you could, uh, you know, fix the shape a little better with the kneaded eraser. We can always do that. And now I could come back and put a little detail in. See, on this side, it's more of the shadow side. You can see the cast shadow of the lower lip go much further up. However, here, it kind of stops right there. And I got a little overzealous with this dark here. So we could definitely lighten that up with the white pastel. And that's going to help to create a sense of of the translucency of the lip as well you know rather than just erase come in with the white pastel and give it that translucency ah uh, patrick says he has to go take care my friend always a pleasure and uh mr Dwayne says uh, he also don't do uh, practice on paper. He uses a small sheet of glass. Uh, really have to get control down perfect. Just, wow, that's really good. So you, that helps you to fight against spidering and, and stuff like that. So that's a great technique. I have to try that. I do practice oil painting on glass. So I definitely... I'm going to uh, work with that. Thank you for that information, Mr. Dwayne. We all should uh, learn from Dwayne on that one. That sounds like a great way to hone your technique. We can always sharpen our technique, right? Always, always. And Dwayne says, nice clutch and exactly, Tim, plus a razor blade cleans it. Exactly, that's how I do it with my oil paints when I practice on the glass. Wow. You might be a natural oil painter, Dwayne. You don't know. Have you tried oil painting? I know you, you didn't. I know you said uh, you mostly just do the uh, airbrush, but I know you would kick butt as an oil painter. I would love... If you had any questions to help you get into that, I think you would really do amazing stuff without question. Okay, I'm going to let that dry and get rid of that pencil line. And then we can see, now you can see how our lips are starting to take shape a little bit. You know, not promising the world just yet, but little by little. 
And you can see I may be a little overzealous with how light the inside of her lips are, but we'll definitely uh, wait on, the jury is still out, right? So we're gonna wait on that. And we definitely could come in like with the straight white pastel pencil, right? So let's say we have the straight pastel pencil, we can start to maybe hit some of these uh, bright lights right now. And that's how we're gonna get the texture. So let me show you. So there is definite texture when it comes to, you know, lips and the skin, kind of wrinkly and thin has a very unique texture and the only way that I'm going to do this is not with the stump but definitely by using a point of some sort and we can get that real skin texture so I can come right here and go pretty powerful and then I'll show you how we could just calm that down now, I've been working with pastel for many, many years, so I know exactly what to do, how to manipulate it, and how that, everything that you do, you should use. If you've been working in watercolor, you should use that in your oil painting, in your pastel painting, in your airbrush painting. Any information that you have, you should always use that in any media, other medium that you go into. So you see right here, I went a little overzealous here, but watch this. I can take my kneaded eraser, and as you can see, see how that's much more powerful. And then I could come down here, and now I could calm these down just by tapping. And the more I tap it, the more of the white pastel is going to uh, be lifted off. So you can definitely control just how how powerful you want those lights and where, right? So that's important. So now I have this and I could start maybe working on some of the moisture on her tongue here. And once again, we can always calm this down as Bobby Brown said, it's my prerogative. And we'll do our best. So right here, you see, we do have some lights and I could just put them in regular and then just calm them down. And I'll show you how I'll calm them down just by tapping here, keeping some really bright, calming some down here and there. Then coming right here, getting some powerful ones. Great, let's take a look and see how good or bad it looks. Okay, so you see we're starting to get some of the moisture in her mouth here, her mouth area. And we don't want to uh, make a decision yet. We still have to paint everything, so, but we will get rid of some things that just doesn't look like it works. And, and let's see what I missed. Twain says he did a couple of oil paintings way back in high school. And was pretty good. Uh, then he got into airbrush and never looked back. Cool. And by a couple, I mean a few dozen. Wow, so you were really into it, huh? That's great. So that goes to show you I was, I'm right. You do have a, you are a natural. One of these days you'll get back into it, my friend. Trust me. And 
and I'm just doing some of the light as it's hitting uh, her philtrum. And let's see, let's let's go ahead and put this uh, this catch light in her eye there. Let's make this happen at 11:20. See that really really kind of make her come alive. We still have a ways to go, maybe another week or two, but I am loving this part. Little bit of moisture right there. Okay, so let's let's zoom in. We're gonna work on her eyes. So right here, we're gonna take a piece of paper. We're gonna kind of cut it. And then I am going to spray because I wanna get the under part of her lower eyelid so we can put the white. So let's make this happen, guys. And you see how I made sure that I use this torn paper because that torn paper is going to give us that organic shape, right? And we're going to let that dry. And we can take that stump, right, once again. And we can start working on some of the translucency of the white of the eye. And it's far from, from white, of course. And we can start just ever so lightly, just coming into the designs of her eye, her iris. And this is the stuff you get better at with time. This should be dry. Right here, there's just this little slit of light, just like that. And I can calm it down with this eraser. There we go. And what we do with one eye, we have to move on over to the other. Let's make that happen. Okay. And like I said, everything is cumulative, right? So you're not trying to solve the equation at once. And this is a way to really get that translucency of the white of the eye. And you see it is cloudy, right? Kind of put in some of the lighter designs inside the iris. It's 
still a long way to go even though I'm doing some pretty tight detail here it doesn't mean that we're out of the wood yet See how we're kind of at the edge of the lower eyelid here. And that's at the edges where you see the highlights usually. It's usually at the edges. A lot more to do, but just kind of establishing. So as we zoom out, we definitely can see that, you know, her eyes are really starting to pop. Let's see what I missed. Uh, uh, oh, thanks, Dwayne. Dwayne says she's looking awesome. I really appreciate that, sir. Okay, so we have a buildup of light on her nose. So let's go ahead and just... Uh, get some pastel on the sandpaper and whatever's facing the light is going to get more white so we're going to make sure that we begin that process really want everything and this is what I tell my students everything's a three-dimensional form and everything you have to make it three-dimensional and if you could do that and get that concept down you're going to do amazing and it's just going that's going to be the turning point in your career as a realist portrait painter that all of these little shapes all these little anatomical forms are all being interacting with the light so they're all round and it's your job to make them round now there are some round, some that are rounded, some forms are cylindrical, some are square, but they're all being affected by the light and shadow in the same way. And now you can see that as we begin coming in to, uh, hey Paul, how are you? Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Brad says, looking great. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you for the Super Chat sticker. I really, really, really appreciate that. And as you can see, as we are getting into the point where we're starting to make things three-dimensional, now, now we get our likeness. That's what I always say. Paint the light. Don't paint the likeness, right? The light is what's going to give you the likeness. So if you are painting the light, then things will really start to come into focus. Your model, she will start becoming three-dimensional, coming to life like Pygmalion and Galatea. If you guys know that story. So thank you for the live, hanging out with the live stream. It was an interesting one, that's for sure. Uh, kind of off balance with the bad news that I got early but thank you for being here with me and sticking with me tonight and see how our lips are starting to come together as we are thinking of the three-dimensional forms of this small smaller muscles and fat compartments here in her in her lip area everything like that and her tongue and all that stuff everything's a three-dimensional form Todd have a great night my friend
And now when we come back, we're really going to work on uh, we're making these uh, anatomical forms much more three-dimensional with the white pastel really bringing, bringing her likeness to us as well. Okay, guys, it's 1130. Thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, we are getting really close. We're starting to uh, get her expression, and, and we can finish the hair and, and her hands, and then come in with the medium to dark mixture for the dark highlights next week. We should be done, and then we'll work on our next painting for the subsequent uh, week but thanks guys thank you so much Dennis I really appreciate you Dwayne thank you so much for the super chats Brad you guys are amazing uh, really uh, help relieve the stress uh, to keep this live stream going and uh, and your friendship guys really helps relieve the stress of life I hope you guys have a great week happy painting Email me with any questions you might have. God bless you. Bye, guys.